Welcome to Inside Chips, the podcast that keeps you up to speed on the fast-moving world of semiconductors. I'm your host, Gregory Haley, Technology Editor with Semiconductor Engineering, and every week we'll bring you the breakthroughs, the deals, and the science shaping the chip industry. Welcome. Today is Friday, April 11th, and here is what happened this week. The U.S. Department of Commerce is investigating TSMC for potential export control violations involving Huawei-linked chip designs, reports Reuters. The probe, kicked off by a Tech Insights teardown of a chip last year, could result in a $1 billion fine for TSMC. The foundry denies wrongdoing, stating it has not shipped to Huawei since 2020 and that it complies with all export regulations. Meanwhile, TSMC's net revenue increased almost 47% in March compared to March of last year and is 10% higher than in February of this year. Worldwide semiconductor manufacturing equipment sales rose 10% in 2024 to a record $117.1 billion, according to SEMI. Growth was led by surging investments in AI, advanced packaging, and high bandwidth memory with strong gains in both front-end wafer processing and back-end assembly and test. China led global spending with a 35% jump to nearly $50 billion, while Taiwan saw a 16% decline. Google introduced Ironwood, its seventh-generation tensor processing unit, and the first designed specifically for inference and AI workloads. Ironwood delivers up to 42.5 exaflops, in its 9,216 chip configuration, six times more high bandwidth memory capacity, reaching 7.2 terabytes per second per chip. IBM unveiled its Z17 enterprise scale AI mainframe, claiming a 40% growth in cash versus Z16, enabling more than 450 billion inferencing operations in a day and one millisecond response time in a hybrid cloud environment. The UA-Link Consortium ratified the UA-Link 200GB 1.0 specification, which defines a low-latency, high-bandwidth interconnect for communication between accelerators and switches in AI computing pods. In global news, global electricity consumption from AI chipmaking increased by more than 350% between 2023 and 2024, with a commensurate rise in emissions, reports Greenpeace. Microsoft announced it is slowing or pausing some early-stage data center projects to strategically pace plans, including a $1 billion Ohio project. In Europe, the EU published its AI Continent Action Plan, aiming to become a global leader of AI by setting up a network of gigafactories with 100,000 advanced AI chips. Said Hai Pao, An AI policy researcher at Europe Think Tank Interface said the plan inadequately addresses a key roadblock, and that's talent. Newmonda and Ferroelectric Memory are collaborating on design, test, and marketing of FMC's non-volatile DRAM Plus in Germany. And the Czech Semiconductor Center launched to support European fabulous companies with mentoring, financial guidance, access to advanced design tools, prototyping platforms, and small-scale chip production. Now let's take an in-depth look at what's happening at Semiconductor Engineering. In our new chiplet trade-offs and limitations feature, multi-die assemblies offer more flexibility, but figuring out the right amount of customization can have a big impact on power, performance, and cost. Let's welcome our founder and executive editor, Ed Sperling, to the show to discuss further. Hi, Ed. Uh, What's new with chiplets? Well, the chip industry is still trying to figure out how to basically create a supermarket for chiplets. You've got large system companies like Google and Apple and big chip makers like Intel and AMD. They're already using chiplets, and they've actually been very successful with them. So these are basically small dies with very limited functionality. And the idea has always been that you should be able to snap them together like Legos and have them work. Well, it's not that easy. Uh, which is why most of the chiplets used today are developed in-house for specific designs. You said most of them. Yeah, and the one big exception is high bandwidth memory, which is a stack of standard DRAM chips. But even there, vendors like Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron, the big three that are making uh, HBM, 
they're looking to customize some of the interconnects. So we're also starting to see standardized IO chiplets, which are probably the next big commercial chiplet op opportunity because these chiplets need to communicate with other chiplets. They need to communicate with other components and just developing these in-house is really not cost effective for the vendors that are creating them. So the next phase of chiplet evolution is probably going to include more of these kinds of standard based chiplets. And that's going to start to reduce the cost, simplify connectivity and really start to ramp up this supermarket approach. Oh, that's great. Uh, so where do you see this market going? Well, it appears that automotive is probably going to be one of the big drivers of chiplets in the future. No pun intended. And the reason is that they need the most advanced logic for things like autonomous and assisted driving, but they don't want to pay the cost of a five nanometer or three nanometer SOC. That can be a hundred million dollars. Plus, if they can create what is essentially a chassis for chiplets with standardized interfaces. So even if those standards are just for their own product line, then they can start to customize these vehicles just by plugging in a different chiplet. That also helps to future-proof their designs because when you buy a new car and you're paying tens of thousands of dollars, you do not want it to be obsolete after three years. Yeah, I think the interchangeability is going to be key for really getting that market going. It's going to be a lot of changes coming up in the chiplet industry. Absolutely. Thanks, Ed. And coming Monday, be sure to check out Semiconductor Engineering's free deep dive advanced packaging ebook at semiengineering.com. Let's turn to money and reports. In acquisitions, Infineon plans to acquire Marvell's automotive Ethernet business for $2.5 billion to complement its MCU business and build up its capabilities for software defined vehicles, as well as new opportunities for physical AI. Siemens Digital Industry Software acquired Downstream Technologies, a provider of manufacturing data prep solutions for PCB design, to expand its portfolio of PCB tools for the small and medium-sized business market. Micronic acquired Robat, a UK-based maker of high-frequency signal quality test equipment for bareboard PCBs. Arizona-based Spirit Electronics acquired Ohio-based Smart Microsystems. Bosch and synthetic diamond company Element 6 launched a joint venture, Bosch Quantum Sensing, to commercialize diamond-based quantum sensors. Horiba Steck Korea acquired South Korea-based Edamax, a specialist in wafer inspection systems for compound semiconductors. Magnachip is shutting down its display driver IC business to focus on power ICs and discretes. Scient launched a semiconductor subsidiary to provide ASIC, turnkey, and IC design services. And the bipartisan U.S. National Security Commission on Emerging Biotechnology released Charting the Future of Biotechnology, a comprehensive report strongly urging higher and immediate prioritization of biotech, particularly for national defense against China's state-backed investments. In security news, the Common Weakness Enumeration, version 4.17, has been published, adding three new weaknesses, including two for hardware and other updates. Samsung Semiconductor updated vulnerabilities in its Exynos processors. Keysight introduced a security test bench for side-channel analysis and fault injection testing of chips and embedded devices that integrates oscilloscopes, interfacing equipment, amplifiers, and trigger generators into a single PXIE chassis. IDC is predicting around 12% growth in European security spending in 2025 due to increased threats as well as tighter regulations. In research news this week, Cornell, Princeton, and NYU researchers found training efficiency and in inference performance was enhanced when using optically connected multi-stack high bandwidth memory modules for large language model training and inference. Sandia National Laboratories, the University of New Mexico, and Maxwell Labs are developing a method for cooling chip hotspots using lasers and a gallium arsenide cold plate. Yale University-led researchers leveraged phonon polaritons, a type of quasiparticle, to find a new method to dissipate the energy of high-speed electrons through the generation of long-wavelength infrared light. Researchers at the University of Michigan developed a new technique for designing a slot antenna for the next generation of wireless technologies. 
Emory University, Georgia Tech, and others created a blood clot on a chip model to evaluate the effectiveness of treatment options. And the UK launched an integrated quantum networks hub, backed by 42 million pounds, led by Harriet Watt University. It aims to develop novel technologies, protocols, and industry standards necessary for the deployment of quantum communications infrastructure. And that's all for this episode of Inside Chips. For more in-depth news and analysis, head over to semiengineering.com. I'm Gregory Haley. Thanks for listening.